Okay, we're just going to look at a new uh, budget multimeter. Um, now, I've been using this uh, Obon HDS 2102S for, oh, I, I don't know, maybe uh, over a year probably. Um, and it's turned into my daily use meter, which was never the intention. I really needed it uh, for the occasional oscilloscope use or signal generator, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but to go with it, I purchased uh, some Fluke. Oh, what was it? 113? Absolute garbage. The display. <laughs> One thing you need with a multimeter is a display that you can see. The Fluke have really cocked that up. It was just a hideous display. In fact, I assumed the first one was faulty and got a second one for Amazon. It turned out to be just as bad. So I don't know what the hell Fluke are playing at. Um, but, you know, that was absolutely shocking. Now, I could have gone out and bought one of the two, three, four hundred pound Flukes now. Uh, with nice fast response times, but I'm not doing it. If you can't get a you know a budget meter right, I can't trust Fluke now to uh, you know be producing uh, anything of any quality. You can't have bad displays on multimeters. It's just a complete waste of time. Now, one of the problems with this is uh, for daily use is the speed. Now, if I just turn it, and it's a bit of a faff. So you've got to turn it on first of all. It will go through this boot up sequence, like so. You've then got to switch it to um, ohms, which is here. It goes on on the auto system. I mean, you can forget auto ranging uh, unless you've got five minutes to spare. Uh, I've just shorted out the probes, and it's so you know it's useless, absolutely hopeless. Uh, so you need to change it to a manual range. Uh, Again, you've got to cycle through. Now, the measurements I'm taking, usually up to 2K is fine. Certain things we're now working on, I need uh, a little bit higher, so I have to go up to a 20K range. Now, you'll see now that the response is better, but it's not quite quickly, uh, not quite quick enough uh, for my liking. Um, so, and if it goes off, um, if you turn it off it won't come back on on that range it just literally goes through the boot up sequence and back to normal it would be great if you could save uh, you know, where you actually would like it to start but you can't so um, last week or so I've been thinking about you know what my options are I'm, I'm just not prepared to give fluke my money uh, having wasted my time before if they can't produce a cheap budget multimeter with a decent display then uh, I'm not wasting money on it Anyway, so I found this uh, again, O1. Um, I don't know what the model number is? It's a Bluetooth digital multimeter, true RMS, uh, non contact voltage detection, data logging. It's the OW18E. And I'll put the price and the link to it in the description. But I think it was only about £50 from Amazon. So we're just going to have a closer look at this. Uh, today because I was actually uh, quite pleased with this. So you've got your usual K-type couple uh, with um, the push-in terminals. Uh, the uh, bead on the end is quite, uh, quite large and rough so I certainly won't be using that. Uh, we then have some crocodile clips Big rubber boots, Cat 3 apparently. We have some multimeter leads and probes. Yeah, don't like the feel of those very much. These are actually, are they even marked with a, yeah, Cat 3, so yeah, not brilliant. Not particularly sharp. I mean, they're not bad, but they could be sharper. I'll be using the ones that were in the uh, the HDS, but they're acceptable. So then we have a hideous screwdriver uh, for uh, the battery cover. It's got a uh, <laughs> end there that you can put uh, in, I don't know, in a another socket or whatever certainly too slippy to use you know like that so that was that now because this has bluetooth it uh, does actually have uh, a bluetooth uh, app it's called the ble multimeter app uh, for android and ios you can scan 
these codes and uh, you can download the software on your phone you may need to change the uh, install settings uh, you know you might need to change it from only trusted sources or the play store or whatever to installing packages you know manually uh, the quick guide is not too bad at all actually um, covers a lot of the options uh, category uh, protection is shown and you've got uh, let's go through this in a minute let's have a look at the maker okay so It's not particularly big, it is quite light, I'm just going to turn the scales on and we will uh, measure that. There is a pull out piece on the back as you can see, let me just weigh it. So 360 grams, I've already got the 9 volt battery into this, it's a simple case of removing this screw. And then that comes out and the battery sits in there. Now, weirdly, the stand is part of that. Uh, so you need to be uh, aware of that when you put the battery in. Make sure everything lines up okay. <laughs> like so. Bit of a odd arrangement, but it works okay. We've also got on the back little silicon holders for the probes so yeah that's that on the top we have the non-contact voltage detector and it will work between 90 and a thousand volts 50 or 60 Hertz and I think there might be a lamp uh, in there uh, we'll try that in a minute so on the front it's got a big bit there that says true RMS uh, select range uh, backlight and H I think that's hold uh, data hold and then you've got Hertz duty cycle uh, Bluetooth and uh, I think that's relative um, there then here we've got off uh, DC AC uh, millivolts and, and volts we've got ohms continuity and diode uh, we've got a capacitance test we've got Hertz and uh, duty cycle uh, thermometer here it's actually got a reading on there with nothing plugged in that's interesting hmm. perhaps there's a built-in thermistor that's overridden when you plug in another thermistor I can't imagine why it would is that the right temperature mm, don't know might be let me turn that on and see <laughs> yeah it's not far off yeah interesting so that might well be built in uh, non-contact voltage you've got EF coming up there and if we just turn on this hot plate you'll see what happens if I just bring it up to this wire Now you wouldn't trust your life with it, but it could be uh, could prove to be uh, useful. I've just put it up to some of the mains adapters that are plugged into the wall socket there, and it senses that. And then you've got microamps, milliamps, and amps. So my main interest is ohms, obviously. A uh, couple of features that you might not be overly keen on is the fact this will turn itself off after I think it said 30 minutes you get a bleeped warning uh, before it turns off uh, and then you have to press you have to press the dial sorry turn the dial or press one of the buttons uh, to 
change that. Right, sleep mode. Uh, it automatically enters the sleep mode if the rotary button is not moved or a key is not pressed for 30 minutes. Uh, now the interesting thing is there is a way around this using the Bluetooth. Um, so uh, when the Bluetooth is activated this function is disabled and that's the mode I use it in. Uh, so you can disable it but it is bloody annoying. Uh, I'd like to be able to override that you know, man, you know, press button. You know, whether you turn it on with a button held down or something. Uh, I appreciate that the battery can go flat if you cock that up and don't realise it's on. But I'd rather have that option. Uh, yeah. So you have to once it's gone off to sleep, you press and hold the select button for four or five seconds, and then it will fire up. Or you can turn the rotary dial. Personally, I don't want to move that rotary dial uh, unless I have to. That's going to be a weak aware spot uh, on any meter. Uh, we've got an LCD backlight, and uh, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, so you press and hold the button there, and hopefully, you can see the nice bright display. Now, the display is visible from the front uh, and the sides. Obviously it goes a little bit as you get to acute angles. It's not very good from the top and it's better from the bottom. But you know where I want to see this uh, head on it's uh, it's pretty pretty reasonable. I've got no problems with that. Press and hold to turn that off. Uh, data hold was just press it once and you can see hopefully maybe you can't you can see hold come up there so that is useful um, relative measurements uh, are on here yeah, I think that's gone into oh sorry I've turned the Bluetooth on there anyway so Bluetooth connection to your phone with the uh, mobile app once that Bluetooth is flashing, you can make a connection to your phone and it also uh, disables the auto off. So that is very uh, handy. Um, yeah, so when this is going off to sleep, it will bleep uh, five times to warn you uh, and then emit a long bleep and then turn off. Uh, the buzzer is continuous if you uh, are on a voltage that exceeds a thousand volts DC or 750 volts AC. Um, when the Bluetooth function is idle for 10 minutes, the Bluetooth will be turned off automatically before, before turning off the buzzer will bleep twice. So how I use it is I run the app on the phone, make the connection and you know use it like that and this does not then go off. Uh, Non-contact volts, uh, volts detection, yeah, that's uh, fine. Uh, Bluetooth function. Now, you may find that useful, and I like their app, actually. It is surprisingly <laughs> OK. Um, it's called Multimeter BLE, and if we run that, it says no device currently. Now, I've obviously gone into the Bluetooth settings, and I found this device must be flashing. Uh, I don't know whether you can see that in the display if that Bluetooth button is uh, icon is solid it is not transmitting itself uh, so it must be flashing once you've paired it in your Bluetooth settings you can kind of forget about it it will actually tell you um, that it won't connect to it you have to run the app to run it so no device we're just going to click on that it will do a scan uh, it's found BDM which is what this is uh, we can just click on that give it a second and it is connected now it seems to me that you can connect two meters I don't know why you would want to but you probably could now you can switch between the two we don't want to do that um, I want a bigger screen of that so if you just touch on there it will open up like so uh, you can do everything from here you can change the range the speed is very quick. Let me just get the probes out of the other meter. Hopefully you can see how quickly this uh, responds. We've got both on screen. So hard with the um, the uh, lighting and everything. 
need to turn this off, there we go. Right, so here we go, I'm going to touch the probes and watch these screens. Bang, I mean they are pretty much in sync. There is the tiniest delay as you would expect on the phone, um, but excellent. I mean you could be, uh, if this was in a real, if you had to get somewhere that was a bit awkward um, and you couldn't see this because there's no to put it, you could use your phone prop that up somewhere and just make the measurements um, so yeah everything's available cycle through the ranges etc that changed the mode uh, maybe not what else can we do hmm. okay we're selecting that's continuity that is diode and auto so whatever's available on that button we can cycle through. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so yeah, you can see how slow that auto ranging is. I mean that's just dire. So we can select the range again. Let's go to the lowest one, which is 200 ohms. Very quick. Let's go to continuity. And hopefully you can see how quick this is. Very quick. I'm pushing it to the limit there. <laughs> Pretty good. Quite happy with that. It's not a function I use very often. Sometimes you use it for circuit uh, fault finding. Um, but uh, yeah, so if it does go to sleep and you bring it back on, unfortunately it does not come on in the mode that you uh, left it in. So in my case, if I am on uh, the 2K, uh, where are we? Let's go back to resistance range. So I want it always on 20K. It will not come back on that, but it's, you know, it's easy enough to select the range. Uh, through there. Um, uh, what else have we got? Now apparently you can use this uh, with your PC. Um, we need a Bluetooth dongle and install the multimeter BLE software. I don't know where you get that. There's a driver to install so perhaps if we do a little search online for that that will become obvious and then it goes on about how to set that up again probably not something i'm going to need it's also got data logging uh, multimeter offline record so there are some data logging uh, facilities again not something i'm expected to use but if you've got an intermittent fault and you think you're dropping a voltage occasionally intermittently you can use this uh, to store uh, that data and then go back and have a look and see exactly what has uh, has failed. So I'm quite happy with this. It says it's true RMS. It's a 20,000 count uh, meter. Uh, no issues recommending that at that price as well. Now I believe it had a torch mode on the front. Does that come on? Oh yeah. So on the front there you've got a uh, when the back lights on and that torch is lit and actually I don't know whether you can see if you were working in a dark cabinet or something that would be you know quite good to uh, get in there and actually be working <laughs> with that torch on so a useful feature a lot of features for 50 quid um, so yeah pretty happy with that so far and the, the fact that the app is uh, is really quite nice um, and you know is responsive it's good so uh, I've got no qualms in recommending uh, that certainly I wouldn't be buying any of the uh, budget flukes uh, this is uh, in my opinion far superior mainly because it's got a screen that works so uh, anyway that was the o o OW18 I think this was the E version wasn't it let's have a look yeah uh, with, uh, with Bluetooth so there we go